You are really in touch with the consumer out there. We've seen a really tough year, a lot of people being forced to stay at home. I'm wondering what you're seeing as we prepare for the autumn, the fall and into winter. What are you anticipating as we enter this period? Case counts are climbing all around the world. Well, if you look, one of the things, obviously, I'm just so proud of our over 500,000 associates and how they're serving their customers every day. And what, we're, what our customers are telling us is they're learning how to cook again, uh, they're enjoying uh, cooking, and they're enjoying cooking as a family. All of those things are things that we think will be trends that will happen even when we get through COVID. And uh, with our associates there serving our customers, uh, we just think those things together uh, will be really important. And, you know, when families eat as a family, they stay as a family, and everything we can do to support that is uh, good for us and good for the customer as well. What gives you the confidence that that is going to continue, Rodney? You gave a forecast well above street expectations, but many of your peers have been reluctant to do that given the uncertainty. So what gives you the confidence to issue not just a forecast, but a fairly strong one? Yeah, it, it's two things. One, we wanted to be as transparent as we could and let our investors understand how we're seeing uh, the next couple of quarters and the future and also in terms of 2021. So we were just try, uh, trying to be transparent and be as helpful as we could. And obviously, uh, when we look at behavior, uh, customers are continuing, uh, basket size are large, uh, huge increase in our digital business uh, and all of those things. And people are continuing uh, to like to cook and bake. And our research tells us they're actually enjoying it. Why do you think, Rodney, why are you so certain that this behaviour will carry on post-pandemic? All evidence all seems to suggest from other sectors that there's pent-up demand. People want to go out again. They want to socialise. Why are they going to be at home baking when that opportunity presents themselves once there is a vaccine? I, I, from our perspective and just talking to our customers, uh, the, the big part of it is people enjoy doing things together as a family. And... That's the uh, insights and what everything suggests. That doesn't mean they won't go out to restaurants. They just won't go out as, uh, we don't expect they'll go out as frequent as they did before. And if you look at markets where uh, the COVID incident rates are lower, uh, we still see similar behavior uh, in terms of uh, the amount of money people spending in the stores. Now, they will have smaller baskets and come more frequently uh, when COVID rates are lower, uh, but still the overall numbers is pretty similar to where low COVID rates and high COVID rates. Well, let's talk about how they're getting their groceries, Rodney. You saw digital sales up 127% last quarter. That's pretty remarkable, but how do you see yourself competing in the online grocery space versus the likes of Amazon or Walmart, for example, and what is that going to do to your margins? Well, you know, for, for us, uh, you, you look at your competitors and you learn from them, but we really are focused on what does our customer want and what are our customers need from us. And our customers tell us uh, they love our fresh product. Uh, we do a really good job. And if you look at digital, it's just another way of providing that. And what we find, other than customers that are at risk, they still come into the store. They just don't come in as frequently. And it's a combination of a seamless experience where uh, customers can engage with us digitally, uh, they can come into stores, they can do pickup or delivery, and we just try to be there any way we can. And the, the thing that's special about us is, would be our associates and their friendly service and the freshness of products. And both of those together, along with using our data to help customers help stretch their budget, uh, it's that combination together that we offer and the reason why customers like coming to Kroger. Are you going to ultimately, though, have to figure out ways of providing less interaction between your people and your customers? It's interesting. There are reports, and certainly it's prevalent here in Europe, people aren't using cash anymore. They don't want to touch things. They don't want to interact with people during this phase. How do you marry those two things up? How do you marry having great staff and great consumer-facing people and concern amongst your customers that they want to get the shop done as, to excuse the phrase, as cleanly as possible? Yeah, well, 
what we really do strive to do is letting the customer engage ever how they want to engage with us. So we have Kroger Pay, uh, we have uh, obviously digital, any, any way you want to engage with us, you can. So if a customer doesn't want to uh, engage with somebody, they don't have to, they still get the great fresh products. Uh, but we really do strive to let the customers decide how they want to engage with us. And if you look at our digital business, you know, I always tell people job one is make sure we keep the customer. Over time, we continue to learn how to be profitable with that customer. And if you look at early next year, we'll start opening a couple of Cotto facilities, mm -hmm. which Guy, I know you're very familiar with. Well, let's talk about those, those automated warehou warehouses. How do you see that positioning Kroger for longer term growth? If you look at our digital business overall, as you mentioned before, it was up well over 100%. And what we find is that we'll be able to use the Ocado facilities that are incredibly efficient and effective uh, for uh, certain customers. And it'll be a combination of a big Ocado facility, smaller local facilities in our stores, and both in terms of pickup and uh, delivery from a store or an Ocado shed and physically going into the store. So it's the combination of all those together uh, that will create that seamless experience for the customer. Are you seeing any food price inflation? There is certainly evidence that that food price inflation is beginning to pick up. Do you think that those numbers are going to increase? Um, they certainly seem to have been during this pandemic. Do you think that higher inflation rate within food is going to stay with us post pandemic? If you look at inflation, uh, meat would be an area where we had significant inflation uh, during the first and second quarters. Our, pro our projections would indicate uh, significantly lower uh, meat inflation uh, in the third quarter and beyond. Uh, there's plenty of product in the supply chain. It's just having the plants uh, not being able to, to operate and there's, uh, for the most part, they're back on stream. Uh, if you look at other areas of uh, inflation, uh, we would see limited. And as we look out next year, we're kind of assuming a half a percent to one percent uh, inflation, which is more traditionally what we've historically had. In terms of pricing, Rodney, how will, if we do not get another stimulus package here in the U.S., which is looking increasingly unlikely, how does that impact your customers and your pricing power? Yeah, our assumption is that uh, it doesn't happen. Uh, if it does, that's uh, great because everybody, uh, if you look in the U.S., it really would be helpful. Uh, when you look at customer behavior, uh, you certainly see customers uh, stretching their budget and paying attention to when they get paychecks and uh, SNAP payments, things like that. It's also one of the reasons why throughout the pandemic, uh, every week we've continued to do promotions, uh, we've continued to invest in price, uh, we did not pass through all the inflation that we incurred, especially in meat. And all of those things together, just trying to help our customers be able to stretch their budget. We also waived our pickup fee on digital. Uh, but all those things together, try, we're trying to do our part to help our bu customers' budget go just a smidgen further. Are people stocking up right now? I'm, I'm curious as to consumer trends. Um, where are we? Are people's, you talk about the big basket sizes that you're still experiencing, are they beginning to pick up? Is the, are the SKUs changing in terms of the mix that you're seeing right now? Uh, I'm curious as to the kind of preparations that maybe people are making uh, as we start to come out of some, summer into autumn. Yeah, I, I love that question. And our customers are telling us they believe there'll be another wave on the pandemic. Uh, but so far, they're really not uh, doing much behavior on stocking up. Now, we continually see customers buying bigger packs than before the pandemic. Uh, and you still will find uh, shortages in areas uh, like sanit you know, uh, hand sanitizers, uh, certain uh, liquids and cleaning supplies, uh, paper towels. Uh, you'll see shortages in certain areas. But from a customer behavior, other than buying big packs, and you also see customers buying more natural and organic product and starting to get back in the rhythm where they were before the pandemic from a, uh, a health standpoint. And if you look at our Simple Truth, uh, our own brand, Simple Truth, is up over 20 percent. 
So you're starting to see that those behavior changes, but really not stocking up uh, at, in a very limited way.